morning, all done. Most of the Christmas taken care of. Now time for hoops. Ready for the Wildcats and the Gales. As Darren White has the basketball, the tip controlled by Davidson. The Wildcats at three and two out of the A-10. And they will start with a lineup of Grant Huffman, Angelo Brizzi, or Britzy, pardon me, Connor Cochera, David Skogman, and Reed Bailey. Three on the way right away from Britzy is good. And Davidson on the board right away. Good comfort level for these guys in the warm-ups. They're knocking out a lot of threes. Not a huge part of their game last year. Gales with Marshallonis and Aiden Mahaney in the backcourt. Alex Dukas at a wing. Joshua Jefferson fresh off a career high against Xavier. And Saxon downstairs. Dukas off to a good start with a tray from the corner. That is a huge boost for Alex, of course, battling some back issues. He shot it very well in the warm-ups. Davidson, Dave, you mentioned, did not shoot the three well last year. Under 32%. Their worst mark since the 1994-95 season a year ago. But they have 10 returners, and they've kind of infused that with some newcomers. It's a tough game to prepare for if you're St. Mary's. Britzy spinning in the paint. Tough finish. Can't get it to go. Jefferson with the rebound. He wants to push himself. The Gales get set in the half court. St. Mary's battling an offensive funk. This three-game losing streak has seen them score under 60 points in each game. Emphasis to get the ball into the post and much more ball movement. Saxon, dangerous pass, knocked away. Nine to shoot, and uh, Mahaney chases it down to the backcourt. Starting lineups, by the way, brought to you by University Credit Union. As Saxon with a roll, that's good wow. ball movement. Wow, not the way that Coach Bennett drew it up. Shot clock got down inside of eight before they got anything going. St. Mary's coaching staff felt the Gales kind of pressed when a few shots didn't go down in Vegas, but that was a good example, Dave, of you know, staying calm in a tough situation and getting a good shot. Need much more movement and more post touches. Reed Bailey on Jefferson into the lane. He goes. A little right hand push shot gets the roll. These guys are picked 11th or 12th in the A-10 this year, but they're very well coached. They run some great stuff, and they can come together very well by the time they get to league play. They open their season with a win over Maryland at the Asheville Championship, a 64-61 margin. Jefferson will try and back down on the 6'10", Bailey. Finds Marshallonis, 8 to shoot. Marshallonis driving the lane, lost the handle, gets his own miss, floats it back in. Even though they scored, A.J., Coach Bennett was not happy with the lack of motion in that half-court set. No live stats at this point yet, so we'll keep you updated the best we can. Back cut on the catch underneath. Kachera, who had 23 against Boston University, unable to find the range. Saxon comes away with the loose ball. Part of a triple header here in Moraga today. Dukas halfway down and out. Jefferson and Saxon were right there for the board. Slips out of Joshua's hands and back the other way to Davidson. The Gale's been very good on the offensive boards. The bad news has been there's a lot of misses. That's why there have been so many offensive rebounds. Bailey. You mentioned that Dave Davidson was picked to finish 12th in the Atlantic 10. Skogman backing down on Saxon. Good footwork. Saxon with the rejection. Good pass by Skogman, but the shot clock will wind down, and that's a turnover on the Wildcats. That'll work for Coach Bennett. I know he's been unhappy with the second-half defense. Play that for the, tunnel, the final, the full 40, and you're in business. Sean Logan, 6'10", sophomore to Westfield, New Jersey, checks in for Davidson, as does Bobby Durkin, 6'7", freshman out of Hinsdale. Again, 10 returners for the Wildcats. Did lose three of their top four scores from a year ago. They were the youngest team, Dave, in the Atlantic 10 last season. Along with the, ske uh, the toughest schedule, too, in the A-10. It was their first season at the 500 mark since 2001. Marshallonis, nice pass to Saxon. A look away for the Goose, who got loose in Vegas. He was one of the bright spots with them offensively. At least against Xavier, a career-high 14 points against the Musketeers. They need him on the floor. He's been in foul trouble for a majority of of the Gales game so far this season. A travel is called on Reed Bailey as Jefferson forces the turnover. And a good start, Dave, for the Gales early on. Yeah, Coach McKillop unhappy wanted a foul there, but steps prior to the contact. Gales with an early 9-5 lead over Davidson on this Black Friday 
Back with more after this from Moraga on ESPN+. Plus. Out of the timeout with Dave Lewis. I'm Alex Jensen. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. And boy, what a way to come out of the holiday, Dave, with a, oh, a nice non-conference fee suite game, albeit not part of a tournament, but... This is a good matchup between two of the, the best mid-major programs in all of college basketball. Just got over the trip to fan hangover this morning, and now a little pressure look for Davidson out of the timeout. Gales break the Wildcat press, and Marshall Lonis with a Euro step, soaring to the rim for two. Playing with a lot of poise, a lot of confidence today. Blocked from behind, Grant Huffman on the drive. Marshall Onis sent it away. Here comes Jefferson running the break. Mahaney wide open from the left wing, rattles it home. First clean look for Aiden and a very quick start out of the timeout for the Gales. That's a good sign for St. Mary's. Mahaney's been struggling of late. Five for 25 in Vegas through two games, just 15 total points. St. Mary's during this three-game losing streak, Dave shooting... Under 36% from the floor. Another turnover on the Wildcats. Reed Bailey dribbles it off his foot. The Coach McConnell said that he needs more cutting, determined cutting, focused, hard movement, hard screens, back to the fundamentals offensively. Bob, uh, Matt McKillop is the head man at Davidson in his second season. Of course, his dad, Bob, a longtime head coach from 1989 to 2002. Dukas has the three rim out. Foul on the rebound. Oh, a travel. Bailey went up to grab the board, and now Deldre Carr says he's got a foul on Saxon. Two officials get together, and Mitch picks up the personal. It's Darren White, Deldre Carr, and Larry Spaulding on the whistles this afternoon. Although Dukas missed that jumper, shooting with a lot of confidence, moving very well today, a very good sign for the Gales. The Gales, a pair of threes early. Last three games, they're shooting under 22% from the line 16 of 74. Bobby Durkin guarded by Mahaney. Also got Kachera out there along with Sean Logan. Here's Huffman. Bigger point guard. Penetrating, trying to get that's about Joshua Jefferson's third or fourth deflection already. There's five on the shot clock for the Wildcats. 16 and 16 a year ago, 8 and 10 in the A10. And it was the Atlantic 10 Daves there. Their first year as a one-bid league since 2005. Five to shoot for the Wildcats. Logan, got to get it off quickly here. Desperation at the end of the clock, and Bobby Durkin misses off the front rim, and Jefferson will run the break himself. Here's Mahaney slithering his way to the left block and scores with left hand. Boy, he used his body so well, Alex, using the shoulder to create some separation. This is an 11-0 St. Mary's run. They lead by 11. Jefferson... Good contest on the Reed Bailey deuce. Back the other way come the Gales. Six minutes in to the first half. Mahaney, good defense there by Huffman on the closeout. Dukas run off the line, gets right to the rim. And a timeout taken by Davidson. Gales offense humming early, Dave. That little break between Sunday and today looks like it's done the Gales some good. Yeah, some days off the healing for Alex Dukas, who's moving very well today. That is a great sign for the Gales. He does so much for them. No live stats as of right now, so going to do our best to give you updated numbers. Luke Barrett has checked into the ball game for Alex Dukas. Davidson counters with uh, Huffman running the point, along with Cachero, who's got it right now in the left wing. Sean Logan out top. Reed Bailey and taking a three is Cachero. That comes up a little short. Bailey with the offensive rebound over the right shoulder. Good contest by Jefferson. Jefferson's held his own downstairs thus far. Mahaney run off the line. Still 20 to, on the shot clock. Jefferson attracts a crowd. Floats it back outside for Mahaney. 13 to shoot. Barrett, a shot fake. Marshallonis open straight away. Yes. Giving up a good shot to get a great shot. Unselfish play by Barrett, who had a tough floater in there, kicked it out for the open jumper. How about the multiple penetrations there? Mahaney and Marshallonis and Barrett after a shot fake. With patience. Yep. Good back cut. That's a good way to break a drought for Davidson. Kachera, he finds Durkin cutting down the lane. And that's what they do. They really like Durkin. Had a big game against Maryland with 16 in the win. Davidson he snapped a two-game losing streak with that win over Boston University. Mahaney wide open right corner off the pass from Jefferson. 
Barrett's put back as it goes. Saxon with an offensive board, and he'll earn his way to the line. Alex, the last game, 20 offensive rebounds. Now, the good news is that there's a lot of effort. The bad news, a lot of misses. 16 and a half offensive rebounds per game for St. Mary's, and this guy's a big reason why. Mitchell Saxon. 7 0 boards last time out. So he will go to the line. 11 for 15 from the stripe this year so far. Preseason All West Coast Conference big man was on the first team a year ago. Three new Wildcats into the ball game. Skogman returns for Davidson. Rikus Schulte, the freshman out of Germany, gets some early minutes here for Matt McKillop. And Britzi has returned as well for the Wildcats. Saxon. Gets them both to go, and the lead back to 16 for St. Mary's. This is a great atmosphere the day after Thanksgiving. Big crowd with the early afternoon game. Nothing close, of course, the last time. They're the only time these two teams played back on March 24th of 2009. That game sold out in 20 minutes. Second round of the NIT. Maybe the most highly anticipated NIT game on the West Coast in the last 20 years. Three from the corner from Schulte is off the mark. Saxon with the rebound. Here comes Marshallonis in the open floor. Inside of 12 minutes to play, a 23-7 St. Mary's lead. Augustus is open. A little short on the three. Bobby Durkin with the rebound as Chris Howell makes his way to the scorer's table. Justin Joyner said that Goose is getting very close to being a consistent three-point shooter, barely missing. He's got a game-high seven points. Britzy off the mark. Offensive rebound to Schulte. He sticks it back in. Imposing as well on the offensive boards. Maybe a little extension with that left elbow. 23 to 9. Just over 11 minutes to play in half number one. It's part of a two game home stand for St. Mary's. They'll host Utah on Monday. How about that pass from Marshallonis? Jefferson misfires. Saxon, another offensive rebound. And a fresh 20 on the shot clock for St. Mary's. Saxon slips. Mahaney with 12 to shoot. After a jab step, a little strong with the three. Luke Barron earns the Gales an extra possession. How about that hustle from the uh, junior from Piedmont? He's not a guy that fills up a lot of statistics, but the energy and the effort, a great plus minus guy, and it's someone that the coaching staff loves. 10.45 to play. All Gales so far here in the first half. They lead Davidson 23 to 9. Deflections as well. Long and active and some great presence in the half court offensively. He has a great calm way about him, the way he plays the game. Now St. Mary's of the basketball after Luke Barrett earned the Gales an extra possession, chasing down that loose ball. Chris Howell and Mason Forbes check in for the first time for St. Mary's. Achille Spadone is in there, sophomore out of Switzerland for Davidson, one of four international players on the Wildcat roster. Here's Howell backing down. Double team comes. 13 to shoot as Marshallonis will get the troops organized. 14-point Gale lead. Marshallonis with six to shoot, draws the foul. And Augustus will go to the line. A little late getting into the half-court set with some final seconds of on-ball, but still able to get some points out of it. Yeah, it feels like, Dave, that's really what part of what this coaching staff loves about Augustus Marshallonis is... You know, the fact that he can make something happen off the dribble. And penetration so strong with that left hand. For the fans watching in North Carolina, the son of the former Golden State Warrior, Sharunas Marshallonis. Foul on the rebound. Saxon commits his second. And he's got the same kind of body as his father, two very strong legs and tough to the basket. Mitchell Saxon just picked up his second foul. Now we get Harry Wessels off the bench. Saxon, six points, five rebounds for the first nine and a half minutes. Gale still shooting 50% from the field. As Davidson will work it ahead. Angelo Britzi, the transfer from Villanova, will run point for the Wildcats. Skogman and Schulte. This is Bobby Durkin. Spadone, the other Wildcat on the floor. Britzy, a lot of contact, no whistle. Britzy had the shot rejected. Marshallonis, 100 miles an hour ahead. Now Forbes 
to the rim. Can't finish, and another putback off the mark, and the Wildcats with the rebound. One of the few games, Alex, where the Gales would be the team would want to play faster. Two teams with similar offensive styles, at least in terms of tempo. According to Ken Palm, they're both in the uh, bottom 322 in terms of slowest teams. A turnover for Davidson. The makings of a first team to 60 wins. Comes Dukas back in there for Luke Barrett. Good activity for Barrett. His time on the floor, a rebound and assist. Comes Hunter Adams, six-seven redshirt freshman out of New Zealand. Checks in for Britsy. Christchurch, New Zealand, the same hometown as former Gale Quinn Clinton, who was in the building here uh, a couple weeks ago. Fifteen points, St. Mary's lead. Gales have been suffocating on the defensive end. 15 to shoot. Marshallonis. Forbes is open. Didn't want the three. Instead, dribbles it off his foot on the drive. And a turnover on St. Mary's. Spadone. Part of the challenge of defending Davidson. Normally, all five guys on the floor can shoot the three. They can really spread you out. There's a miscommunication. Spadone wasn't expecting that pass from Huffman. And Marshallonis, again, will get to the line. Another thing about Davidson, there's no one superstar Curry-like player. There's three players in double figures and a couple other guys that are just under 10 per game. So Marshall Lonis will go to the free throw line here for two more shots. Davidson, they've been uncharacteristic with their care of the basketball so far in this game, Dave. They average less than 10.5 turnovers per game. I don't have an exact number, but it's... Uh, I'd say it's more than four. Again, no live stats just yet. I know they're working to remedy that. It's part of a triple header here in Moraga today. Marshallonis gets both free throws to go. St. Mary's with a 17-point lead. It's their biggest advantage of the afternoon. The mission is to sustain it. They couldn't do that against Weber State at home. The second half has not been kind to St. Mary's during this three-game losing streak. Skogman will try a three. Marshallonis picks up the rebound. Augustus has been everywhere thus far. Playing with a lot of poise. Harry Wessels in the game. Good pass to Forbes, and Forbes shot a little hurried there by Schulte. Missed everything. Looking for the shot blocker who wasn't there. Skogman, a shot fake, gets Wessels in the air, and Skogman will go to the line. So 8-11 to go. Davidson still stuck on nine points. This is a guy they need a big season from last year, coming off the bench for 32 games. Quick start, 11 points and six rebounds a game here in 2023. He's a very good free throw shooter. He was second in the Atlantic 10 in free throw percentage a year ago at 88. Scored in double figures 11 times. It's off to a slow start from the line, though, so far this year. He's now 11 of 19. The redshirt senior out of Waukesha, Wisconsin. Schulte comes off and Reed Bailey returns for Davidson. Second for Skogman is good. Gale lead now 16. Token man pressure. Just make him use the clock to bring it up. Marshall Lonis has not come off the floor yet. Aiden Mahaney checked back in for Chris Howell during the last stoppage. Marshallonis open again. Dukas with the offensive rebound. Now Mahaney trying that second penetration has to circle back out with 15 on the shot clock. Again, Marshallonis from the logo. Attracts a crowd. Here's Dukas on the drive. Across the paint to Forbes. Six to shoot. Dukas open. How about the ball movement? Dukas makes it count. I thought maybe too much passing, but sure enough, the Gales proved me wrong. Made the extra three or four passes to get the open three. 19 points, St. Mary's lead. That's Dukas' second three. Here's Huffman. He's been quiet thus far. Six on the shot clock. 
Bailey on Forbes, and Bailey earns his way to the line. So Forbes picks up the personal. But Dave, right now, St. Mary's is forcing Davidson into one-on-one -on -one matchups. We're not seeing that typical ball movement, and the Wildcats, as a result, shooting under 30%. Yeah, so far choking off the passing lane, so forcing that late shot clock action. Great half for St. Mary's. Hales in control. Up 19 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Back to Moraga after this on ESPN+. Plus. This winter, gift yourself what you really want during Kia's season of giving back sales event. To save time. St. Mary's 29, Davidson 10. Welcome back to Moraga as Reed Bailey shoots free throws for the Wildcats. And Davidson snapped a two-game losing streak with that win over Boston University. Last week, they'll head back and take on Charlotte on the road. As Bailey bottoms both free throws. It's been a tough trip, though, for Davidson so far on the offensive side, Dave. Stuck on just 12 points. They don't have a field goal in over four minutes. Credit to the Gales for choking them out defensively. So 29 to 12, the St. Mary's lead. They've led by as many as 19 in this first half. Duke has a shot fake, a Euro step. Can't finish through traffic, but Mason Forbes right there for the tip jam. Duke just couldn't make the floater, but drawing attention to the defense, creating that spot for Forbes to clean it up. Yeah, it's been, Gales have not had an issue getting into the lane with the dribble. As Huffman misses the three and Wessels cleans up the board. It's really created some difficult situations for Davidson on the defensive side, it seems. Great activity and awareness for St. Mary's defensively. St. Mary's has almost doubled up Davidson on the board so far. That skip pass has been there as well. Turns to a post up for Harry Wessels here. The big man into the paint with the right hand hook. Middle of the paint. Missed everything. Huffman comes away with a loose ball. Wildcats really felt like things changed when Huffman became this team's point guard a year ago. Another deflection, and they're going to say that's out of bounds off Davidson. May have touched Hunter Adam on the wing after the deflection by Dukas. And no argument from Davidson. Slow start for Davidson today, but remember, they finished very strong last year. Four or five wins to close the year, and a win for St. Bonaventure in the A-10 tournament. Take some time. Joshua Jefferson checks back. And now we saw this look a little bit in Vegas for the Gales, Dave, with Mason Forbes at the five. Dukas, he's feeling it. He's got that look today, moving so much better with that week off. 11 for Alex Dukas. St. Mary's up 22 here in the first half. Huffman, good pass downstairs to Bailey, and Forbes changed the shot coming from the weak side. May have nicked it a little bit. How about that pass by Jefferson in the open floor? Dukas can't score, but Forbes does. This is a confident team. This three days or so since that Xavier game, Davis night and day looking at this team's body language. Bailey's been active in the first half. Tough shot. Can't get the roll. Forbes has been terrific. Good ball movement. Jefferson open three. Bodies everywhere on the rebound. Controlled by the Wildcats. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. 15 to shoot. Huffman driving on Marshallonis, a foul called on Augustus. There have been many whistles in this first half. It's the fourth team foul on St. Mary's. Just what you'd want, Alex, defend without fouling. One of those coaching cliches. Marshallonis gets his first rest. It's another area he's so important to this team, Dave. He's their best defensive guard, Marshallonis. Again, he's... Suffered through foul trouble a little bit earlier in the year, and, and as a result, the Gales are really compromised on both sides of the floor when he's not out there. And becoming much more confident as a playmaker. Kickball, so 20 back on the shot clock for the Wildcats. Sean Logan on the catch, guarded by 
Mason Forbes. Here's Huffman. Chris Howell will take a turn. 12 to shoot. Britzy draws contact and scores. The Wildcats need some momentum here, Dave, going into break. They've kind of had it taken to them by St. Mary's. That trims the lead to 22 for the Gales. And Huffman, or pardon me, Britzy will go to the line to try and complete a three-point play. Fallon Mahaney. And that's the challenge for St. Mary's. Not take your feet off the accelerator. Continue to expand on that lead if you can. More full-court pressure here from the Wildcats. Chris Howell will bring the ball up the floor. Four minutes to go. Gales up 21. It's turned to a pretty nice crowd here on this Black Friday. Not a whole lot of empty chair backs in Moraga. 13 on the shot clock. Jefferson probing. Has it taken away by Britzy. It's a foot race to the rim. Luke Barrett trying to chase him down. Blocks it from behind. But a foul called on Barrett. And that will send Britzy back to the free throw line after this timeout. 3.47 to play, Dave, and again, St. Mary's doing it on the defensive side of the floor. Despite the offensive woes, they've turned the defense into offense where they're creating open shots. It's always been something that Coach Bennett's hung the program hat on, that shots may not fall, but you can control what you do on that end of the court. 3.47 to go. Last portion of the first half coming up next for Moraga on ESPN+. Plus. We are the WCC. We are fueled by the conviction to achieve our goals without boundaries. We recognize and we adapt. We welcome adversity. We are Presidential Medal of Freedom winners, NBA champions, Olympic gold medalists, record breakers, and difference makers. We create change and we create champions. We are the West Coast Conference. At St. Mary's, we inspire minds, engage hearts, and transform lives. With small class sizes and professors who know you by name, we inspire our students to thrive. We engage and build connections, knowledge, and skills. Explore boundless opportunities and one-of-a-kind study programs that launch careers. Transform, discover, and make a lasting impact. We are Gales. WCC. We are fueled by the conviction to achieve our goals. Taff, and again, no live stats, so we can't give you the exact numbers, uh, Dave, but again, it's been night and day for the Gales from last week in Las Vegas to now. Just couldn't score. Coaches wanted more movement, wanted more post touches, wanted crispness, harder cuts. We've seen all that in terms of the scoring. We'll look at the stats later, but you can see at the eyeballs are really showing what's happening out here today. Meanwhile, Angelo Britzi will go to the line here for the Wildcats. This is his first free throws and one with 4.10 on the clock in the first half, Dave. The Wildcats' first field goal in six and a half minutes. Second free, they missed them both, and Mason Forbes with the rebound in traffic. So St. Mary's leading by 21. Marshallonis, Mahaney, Barrett, Jefferson, and Forbes. Barrett, nice pass across the paint to Forbes, and he's fouled. Mason Forbes will go to the line for two free throws. Three and a half minutes to play in the opening half. Barrett makes very few mistakes out there. He could have taken it to the basket, taken a tough shot, but very unselfish, creating the opportunity for Forbes. He's earned a scholarship, came to St. Mary's, Barrett did, as a walk-on. Forbes just four for 11 to start the year from the line. Misses the first free throw. The Gales have really struggled from the free throw line so far this year, shooting under 65%. Skogman back in there for Davidson. Forbes splits the freebies. And Mitchell Saxon with two fouls will check back in. Forbes will be a major factor for this team once WCC play rolls around. Yeah, the depth underneath this league, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I heard this coaching staff talk about needing depth, needing bigs to compete in this league. And the tone, of course, is set by Gonzaga. By the way, what a win over UCLA for the Zags and a huge game for Anton Watson. And a loaded Maui field. 
Fritzy from the right wing. Saxon with the rebound. I believe Watson was 14 out of 15 with 32 points and 25 in the second half. Getting him back for Gonzaga was a big deal. He, you could have made an argument he should have been the defensive player of the year a year ago. I think it went to the right guy and Logan Johnson way short on the three for Marshallonis. Saxon right there to clean it up. Contorting and twisting. Coming off the offensive rebound. No doubt in my mind, though, that Anton Watson should have been first team all West Coast Conference. I mean, he was that important to what Gonzaga did a year ago. And finally becoming one of the main guys. Yeah. Spokane native. Two and a half minutes to play here in the opening half. Huffman spinning on Marshallonis. Scoban with the offensive rebound. Bailey didn't want the three. Instead wants to take Jefferson off the dribble. Joshua's been disruptive. A little frustration kicking in now for Davidson. Gale's lead is 24. Go to work, big man. Double team comes. Saxon finds Mahaney. He's wide open. Not going to get a better look than that. Little off the mark. Shepard, another offensive rebound for St. Mary's. And Mahaney will back it out. 151 to go. Good pass. Jefferson a little short on the three, and Barrett again getting an extra possession for the Gales, drawing the foul on Bobby Durkin on the rebound. Just relentless work by St. Mary's along the front line, whether it's the reserves like Barrett, Forbes, Saxon, of course, a force the entire night. So Gail Basman, the fifth team foul on Davidson. Harry Wessels has returned. Sophomore big man, Marshallonis floats it in. Mahaney on the catch with 20 on the shot clock, 142 on the game clock. Jefferson drives the closeout. Lost the handle, loose on the floor. And it is out of bounds, last touched by Davidson. So the Gales will have it with 11 to shoot. Or no, they're going to give it back to Davidson. Barbie, last touch by Jefferson. Chris Howell returns. Jefferson comes off. And Joshua has not scored this afternoon, Dave, but he has been incredibly effective on both ends of the ball, especially defensively with his activity. Yeah, very good in the plus-minus tonight. 125 to go here in the first half. Drive by Spadone, whistle, and a foul. Called on St. Mary's. Davidson is in the bonus, so free throws up coming for the Wildcats. Luke Barrett picks up the foul. Spadone, an interesting player, Alex, a guy that came to the program as a walk-on, became a rotation player by the time they got to the A-10 tournament last year. Dukas returns for Luke Barrett. Well, this is a, a first half, and again, the Gales need to carry this effort over into the second half, Dave, but the last time St. Mary's lost back-to-back -back games by double digits... 2014 at San Diego, a 61-43 loss, and at BYU. It's been nearly 10 years since St. Mary's lost games back-to-back -back by more than 10 points, which is what happened this weekend in Las Vegas. And for those who recall the three-game losing streak a year ago, remember the Gales, of course, had a great season reaching the second round of the tournament. So there is hope to get it together. Off to a good start here. Mahaney thought about the three and instead gives it up to Dukas. Offline, Howell crashes the boards. Loose on the floor and a tie-up. Gales on the possession arrow with 101 on the game clock, 17 on the shot clock. And for St. Mary's, Dave, listen, I mean, th there are opportunities in the non-conference to you know, pick up some quality wins. Utah comes here on Monday. This game represents an opportunity as well. Also got UNLV and Colorado State, who's off to a great start so far this year. Tough shot for Marshallonis. Wow, and using the left hand, twisting and contorting, the goose getting loose. Inside of 50 seconds to play, a 41-17 Gale lead. Huffman looking for the back cutter. Mahaney got a hand in there. Gale's come away with the steal. About a 10-second differential between the two clocks. Two for one is a possibility here. Mahaney will turn the corner. Mahaney with the left hand. It hangs on the iron. Doesn't fall. Howell with the rebound in traffic.
Dukas run off the line. Marshallone is wide open. It's his day. So unselfish. Dukas with a shot fake, whipping the ball to the open. Marshallonis to knock in the three. A career high 15 for Augustus Marshallonis. Davidson's going to let this thing wind down. Five on the game clock. Huffman looking for motion, runs into Wessels. Tough shot at the end of the clock, gets it to go down. They count that as a three right before the buzzer, but they're going to take a look at it. So Huffman gives the Wildcats a bucket heading into the break. But Dave, this first half was all about St. Mary's. The Gales, 44% for the game, but they are squeezing Davidson off on the boards. 21 to 10, the rebounding advantage, holding the Wildcats to just 25 points and just two assists in that first half. The last few minutes watching those sequences on the offensive boards really were indicative of what that first half was about the effort the energy the attacking of the glass loan he's gonna look to build on that he starts knocking down that three playing like this dave he's an all-league type of guy he's so good with either hand and so strong going to the basket so when you have to defend that three white line just makes him much tougher to check points in the paint of that first half st mary's outscored davidson 18 to 8. he was also with 12 points off seven wildcat turnovers start of the second half davidson with the basketball in the red Starters on the floor for St. Mary's. Huffman knocked over on the handoff. 17 to shoot. Huffman with Britsy. Skogman's got the basketball. Enters the post to uh, Reed Bailey backing down on Jefferson. Good hands by Joshua. That's another deflection. He has been so good for St. Mary's on the defensive end. Coach McKillops shook his head along the far sideline, unable to get anything going offensively. Eighth Wildcat turnover. Mahaney attracts the crowd. Saxon, extra pass. Jefferson looking downstairs. They're trying to get it to uh, Saxon, who's got the guard Skogman on him. Instead, Dukas will bottom a corner three. When Alex gets it going, it opens up everything for St. Mary's because he stretches the defense. 14 for Dukas. That's a season high. Skogman will try the three. Got that one. Third Davidson triple. As Skogman answers the Dukas tray. One of three players on this team shooting over 50% from the floor on the season. 56% field goal shooter. Saxon. No one there. And Saxon pivots into an open lane with the left hand. He's in the double figures with 10. Diving from that screen off the weak elbow, getting position on the low box. And with that size, too tough to handle. So the Gale lead is 26. Saxon's got the better of Skogman so far today. Skogman trying to get to that left hand. Saxon denied it. Seven to shoot for the Wildcats. Skogman, another three. Just what the doctor ordered for the Wildcats. Unable to get anything off the one-on-one -on -one game, but stretching out the D with the big man knocking in the three. We mentioned in the outset, Dave, I mean, Davidson not necessarily built to overcome a deficit like this. As Mahaney tries a three, knocks it down. His second three... But when they're right, that's what makes them so tough. A guy like Skogman able to step out, hit the three. It really spreads out the floor for the Wildcats. Not the typical throw it into the post kind of team. Skogman chased off the line by Saxon this time. Ten on the shot clock. Tough shot, able to bounce it through. Tremendous patience in the footwork. That old Pete Newell line, the quality of the shot is equal to the quality of the footwork. Guy that really came on the last six weeks. Wildcats go into a zone here. Jefferson, a little push shot doesn't go down. Saxon, couple of misses, gets his own rebound again. Mahaney, the flyby, and a three. And a high five for fans in the first row. Creating separation with that great lateral movement. He's got a half dozen here in the second half. 11 total points for Mahaney. Huffman's been quiet. Marshall Onis has done a great job on a key cover for the Gales today. Britsy has it taken away by Jefferson. Now Jefferson in the open floor. Turning the corner. Almost lost it. Tried to go across the paint to Saxon. And Bailey comes away with the steal. Britsy. Got past Jefferson that time, able to score off the window. And kept it all on the right hand to avoid the shot blocker. So the lead 25 for St. Mary's. Back into a zone go the Wildcats. 
Jefferson, good ball movement, but Jefferson lost it again, and a timeout taken as Britsy dives on the floor for the loose ball, and Davidson calls time with 16-11 to go. Takes us to a timeout on the floor here in Moraga, Dave, and Davidson showing some life offensively. A little bit of a different look, and kind of done for the day. Welcome back to Moraga, 16-11 to play on this Friday afternoon. With Dave Lewis, I'm Alex Jensen. Glad to have you with us. Gales lead Davidson 55 to 30. St. Mary's outscoring the Wildcats 11 to 10 in this second half. We said going into break, Dave. Davidson's shown some signs of life in this second half. Really, Angelo Britzi's been their best player thus far. And some different look with the zone defense. Gales in a man. You won't see him in a zone almost at all. Tough pass and right through the hands of Sean Logan. Mahaney off the skip, thought better of the three. Jefferson spinning in the lane, met by a crowd, tried to go across the paint to Saxon, knocked away. Mitch wrestles it back with 18 to shoot. Here's Mahaney probing. Saxon, a little floater, gets the roll. He's got a dozen. The mission to play the entire 40 and not. Let up on the gas. Huffman, that's only his second bucket. He does a little bit of everything for Davidson, but it has not been his afternoon. Wildcats go back into a zone. Saxon, bad pass. Huffman spinning on Marshallonis and wow. one. The pirouette. And able to do that going full speed like that. Great move by Huffman. Well, he's trying to make his presence felt. Wildcats have a big hill to climb still. There's 15 minutes left, but the St. Mary's lead is 23, and Huffman will have free throws. We create change, and we create champions. We are the West Coast Conference. Back to action here in Moraga as Huffman missed his hand one. Marshallonis with a heck of a rejection on Britsy in the open floor. St. Mary's leads by 23. 14 and a half minutes to go. This zone has stifled the Gales a little bit. Jefferson, middle of the paint. Missed it badly from about eight feet away. Tough angle for Dukas. That's the second one he's made in this half from that exact spot. And with that zone, so tough traditionally to defensive rebound. 17 for Dukas. Kickball on St. Mary's. Joshua Jefferson he hasn't made a shot tonight, Dave, but he's got six rebounds, three assists, and two steals. Great court awareness. Has turned looking for him in the middle of that zone right at the foul line. He's turned it over four times. That has been a little bit of a, a concerning trend for the Gales here in the second half. There's been a few bad passes, bad turnovers. Skogman's back in there. Three on the way, an air ball from Bobby Durkin. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Gales. Meanwhile, for Alex Dukas, this has been his best game of the season so far. 6 of 11 from the field. 17 points. And it, a guy that's been around now for five years to have a senior take the leadership reins. Sorely needed for the Gales. Marshallonis. Halfway down and out. Wessels keeps the rebound alive. Ends up with it. Dukas again. He's got 20. Yeah, I knew that was in the second it left his hand. And so did Alex. That's his sixth three tonight. Schulte in there for Davidson. Skogman, not this time from three. The yeah, lead is 29. A couple timeouts ago, we were making the case for Marshall Lundis at the postgame guest, but this guy making a run as well. That one nearly dropped. Here's Huffman in the open floor. Huffman splitting defenders. Floater on the way, no good. Wessels. Wards off Schulte for the board. Well, Dukas leads all scorers with 20. Gales have 15 assists so far tonight. Jefferson just drops the basketball. Another sloppy turnover on the Gales. Durkin can't finish in the open floor. One and done for Davidson. St. Mary's out-rebounding the Wildcats 36-13. to 
if that number is indeed accurate. Duke has run off the line this time, drives the close out, across the paint to Jefferson. That's beautiful. Beautiful basketball. Clearly the best that Dukas has played this season and a huge boost for St. Mary's. It really takes them to the next level, doesn't it? Having his scoring. Of course, that game in the NCAA tournament a year ago, and everything really changed when he came out with a back injury. Against UConn, Skogman blocked by Jefferson. Inside of 12 minutes to go, the Gale lead is 31. Davidson team that came into play today with a Ken Palm rating of 106. Dukas again across the paint. Harry Wessels flips it in. A timeout taken by Davidson, and Alex Dukas has taken over here in the second half. 20 points. He's tied a career high with five assists. He is letting the game come to him. He peeked at the bench, looking like he wanted to come out of the game, but had a few more plays in him before the timeout. Gale's in control, up 23. Friday deals in Saturday, only at Target. St. Mary's 67, Davidson 34. Welcome back to Moraga with Dave Lewis. I'm Alex Jensen, and Alex Dukas, Dave, he's having his best game of the season so far with 20 points to go along with five assists. He's really putting the gales on his shoulders here in the second half and creating even more separation. He was looking at the bench for the last two minutes prior to that timeout and still knocking a couple of shots and made some plays. Ashiel Spadone into the lane. Taken away by, by Mahaney defensively. Marshallonis, Mahaney, Barrett, Forbes, and Wessels. Marshallonis, he had the big first half for the Gales, his first bucket of the second half. 12 0 St. Mary's run. Marshallonis is the kind of guy you can put on the post as a guard because of that strength. Foul called on Harry Wessels. Jordan Ross will check into the lineup. He'll replace Marshallonis. The freshman. I should get some extended run here, David. The Gale's up by 35. I think he's been impressive for St. Mary's as a freshman point guard, especially on the offensive end. He has a tremendous upside. The number five player coming out of Arizona as a high school senior. Fritzy. The shovel for Kachera, who's been quiet after 23 against Boston University. Gets the end one here after chasing down his own miss. For so many people, David, you know, you think of Davidson, you think of Steph Curry, you think of that 2008 Elite Eight run, Bob McKillop on the sidelines, and they didn't have to go very far to find their next head coach and Matt McKillop. Of course, Bob's son played for Davidson in the mid-2000s. As Kachera completes the three-point play. Matt was on the staff when they made that run. NCAA victories over Gonzaga, Georgetown, Wisconsin before losing to Kansas in the regional final. You don't have to go very far to find Steph Curry either. He's playing across the bay with the Warriors. That game in 2009 in the NIT here was just, I mean, the atmosphere here was just incredibly electric. Chris Howell also into the game for St. Mary's. Ross looking for the middle of that zone. Deflected. Loose ball. Rolls in the backcourt. Run down by Mahaney with six to shoot. Mahaney looking for Howell and a steal for Kachera. Steph Curry in that game had 26 points with nine rebounds and five assists. As Britsy flips it on. Patty Mills, 23 and 10 assists. That was the last game that Steph Curry played in a Davidson uniform. Other big-time performances that day with Omar Samhan, Diamond Simpson. Game sold out, by the way, in about 20 minutes. Davidson staying in this zone. Mahaney, though, open in the corner. They ran him from the right wing along the baseline. A little mixer action against that zone. I think offensively, for St. Mary's, the way they can move the ball is Bailey can't handle the pass. In some ways, you kind of lick your chops when you know the Gales see a zone if you're Randy Bennett. Well, that's what made the games in Vegas so mystifying because this is in them. 
Open at the high post for Forbes. Howell tried to get it in there and a foul on Britsy. Davidson last year was their their first time not in the NCAA or NIT since 2017. They've reached the NCAA tournament three times since joining the Atlantic 10 in 2014. Two-time regular season champions in the league. Huge power in that Southern Conference with 23 league titles. Forbes with nine on the shot clock. Mahaney, step back. Yes, sir. Oh, the footwork to create some separation. And the sophomore with that smooth touch. Howell with a deflection. Alex Dukas back to the scorer's table. Now these minutes, AJ, for Coach Ben are not garbage time. He's looking to execute and do the right thing the entire 40 minutes. And not just throw guys out there and let them play. Trying to execute an offense and still climb down defensively. Dukas back in there for Mason Forbes. It's been all St. Mary's since the opening minutes in Moraga tonight. Cachero has been quiet after a 23 point output against Boston University. Fouled on his way to the basket is Spadone. And he will make a trip to the line. Freshman got caught staring at the ball defensively, victimized by the back cut. With Dukas back in the game, by the way, Alex, his career best 25, so closing in on that with his 20 today. Spadone will have two free throws. Well, his production has been what the doctor ordered for St. Mary's. I mean, he has been in double figures just once this year. Ten points against Weber State in the loss. Just ten total points in two games in Las Vegas for the Gales. I mean, he is, Randy Bennett called him our biggest recruit in the offseason. I remember seeing the news on Twitter that he was coming back. I nearly fell over. He made the announcement at the banquet that he was coming back for another season. Just his presence on the floor changes the way you have to guard this team as Davidson goes back into a man defense. Mahaney's got 17. Ross trying to turn the corner. Good ball fake, but good hands by Spadone knocking it out of bounds. These are great minutes for St. Mary's to work against the zone. Deflection, bad pass by Ross, and Kachera takes it away. He's been a little loose with the basketball here in the second half. Kachera, Duke has pulled the chair out from under him. Kachera turns it over, takes us to a time on the floor with 7.55 to play, and the Gales in control on this Friday afternoon in Moraga. Gales 75, Wildcats 40. Back with more from Moraga after this. This winter, gift yourself what you really want during... Wow. 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 Welcome back to Moraga. Foul on Harry Wessels in the open floor. St. Mary's leads by 35, 75 to 40 over Davidson. As Mason Forbes checks in, Mahaney, Dukas, Cade Bennett get some early minutes here for the Gales, along with Chris Howell. Huffman for the Wildcats leads the charge, along with Hunter Adam and Spadone. Skogman is back in there as well with Kachera, who's got the ball now. 14 to shoot. Huffman driving on Mahaney. Gets to his spot. A well, corkscrew jumper gets to fall. That time clearing aside for Huffman to go to work. And now going to the press. 2-2-1. Two, two, you want to get the ball in the middle and avoid the sideline. Cade Bennett Mahaney, the two Campolindo graduates. Right up the road. Seven minutes to go on this Friday afternoon. Mahaney's got 17. Dukas has 20. Run up the line from the corner. Little hook pass out to Cade Bennett. Back to Dukas from the corner. Why not? 
23 for Dukas. Make that extra pass and his best effort of the season by far. Huffman driving the lane. Looking for the and one. We'll have to settle for two free throws with six and a half left. It's going to be a very difficult year in the A-10 for a lot of folks. It's a good league. Last year was the drop off with the one bid. But this year, Dayton, the preseason favorite, coming off that loss to Houston in the Charleston Classic. Four starters back. Deron Holmes, an outstanding player. VCU's going to be very good. New coach there with Ryan Odom. St. Bonaventure, Duquesne. So for these young men from Davidson, it's going to be a very difficult lead to crack that top half. But Dayton already with wins over St. John's and LSU. Only losses to Houston Northwestern. Mahaney comes off. 17 points for Mahaney. Marshall Lonis back in there. Dayton. Huffman gets both free throws to go. Now Dayton did suffer a huge loss with Malachi Smith yeah. suffering a torn meniscus. He's out for the year. The A-10 looking to get back to being a multi-bid league again. They had three as recently as 2018. Look at some of the brands in that league, Dave, with you know, a team like Dayton. Richmond has had their years. Davidson, of course. Duquesne. And people expect big things out of the Dukes this season. Ten to shoot. Howell circles out. Cade Bennett. Five to shoot. Bennett trying to cross over and reaching in is Britzy. He mentioned VCU, who was the A-10's representative in the tournament a year ago. Of course, met St. Mary's in the first round. The Gales dispatched to the Rams by 12. Luke Barrett will check in for Chris Howell. New look for the Rams this year with a couple of transfers from Utah State. Ryan Odom, you mentioned, the new head coach for VCU. Spent just a couple of years at Utah State, going back to his roots, though, on the East Coast. Of course, he was the architect of that UMBC team that defeated Virginia as a 16 seed in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Cade Bennett, tough off balance shot. Davidson will return back to North Carolina. They'll take on Charlotte on the 29th, and they'll have four home games. Rice State, Campbell, Miami, Ohio, and USC Upstate. Foul on the rebound is going to go on Luke Barrett. And a neutral site game against Ohio before beginning A-10 play. Do that win over Maryland to start the year. The Wildcats in a close loss to Clemson. A couple of tough losses. Two losses with Clemson and East Tennessee State by a total of five points. Free throws here for Sean Logan with 5.29 to go. Splits the free throws. Rebound tapped out. Gathered by Bennett. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, Dave, a good Utah team comes in on Monday to conclude this two-game homestand. And then the Gales will take on Boise State in a neutral site game. In Idaho Falls, Cade Bennett for three. Did he make one against Stanislaus State? That may be his first college three. I believe he did. But it's the Gales' 15th three tonight. Could not buy a three in Vegas. Five of 23 last time out from beyond the arc. Tonight, 15 of 29. Rory Hawk checks in. As does uh, Harry Wessels. Dukas and Forbes come off for the Gales. Rory Hawk getting his first minutes. Spadone, a one and one. Can't get the roll. And the rebound out of bounds. Last touch by Wessels. By the way, Cade Bennett did make a three point shot against Dennis Lost Days. That's his second collegiate three. Transfer from Stanford, Jarvis Moss checks in for the first time for Davidson. Brandy Bennett will take a timeout. You look at. The schedule going forward for St. Mary was 6-0 start. They just beat Creighton the other night by 21 on a neutral.
Logan handoff to Huffman, chased by Bennett. Huffman leaning in at the shot, altered by Jordan Ross, still able to spin it home. Huffman, a little more activity on the offensive end in the second half, and going back to the press, 2-2-1. Two, two, He's got 13 for the Wildcats. That's team high. You mentioned, Dave, big minutes for the guys on the floor right now for St. Mary's. Bennett, Ross, and Hawk, three freshmen, with Barrett and Wessels. Hawk with five to shoot. Bennett finds Barrett with three to shoot. Barrett into the lane. Tough shot leaning away. A shot clock violation on St. Mary's. 11th Gale turnover. Not overly concerned along the Gales bench, but they are coaching all the way through, wanting execution. Jarvis Moss picked up the dribble, and Hawk reaches in. So Moss will go to the line, 4.06 to play. I think Moss will be a guy before this season's over is, will be a major factor for Davidson. He was one of the better players for the team over the summer. In fact, there were times during the summer workouts he was the best player on the court. First free throw is good for Moss. Really been a part of the rotation in this game. At least while the game was competitive. It's both free throws. 81 to 49, a 32 point St. Mary's lead. Bennett's man falls over, drives to the elbow, drops it off to Wessels. Nice move. Drop, step, great footwork, and completing the play with his left hand. Logan fouled by Luke Barrett. And that will take us to a timeout here. Moraga, 3.42 to go on this Friday afternoon, Dave. And this has to feel good for St. Mary's. It'll be a convincing win coming off a three-game losing streak. Davidson needed Steph Curry here and in uniform because they've been outmanned today by St. Mary's. All St. Mary's final 342 is coming up from Moraga. On next Jensen free throws upcoming here for Davidson and Sean Logan, 6'10 sophomore. We'll shoot the freebies for the Wildcats. It's been a great crowd on this Friday at University Credit Union Pavilion. As Logan hits his uh, first free throw, again, game one of a triple header. On the women's side, the St. Mary's Thanksgiving Classic will begin at 4 o'clock West Coast time. UT Arlington and Illinois State, followed by St. Mary's North Carolina A&T at 6. Gales will go into the weekend with a good feeling after this one. Only by 32. Meanwhile, for Davidson... Again, they will fly back to the East Coast, take on Charlotte five days from now on Wednesday. Wessels. Hawk with the drive. Rory Hawk could score. He's looked very good in his limited minutes. There's a lot of options for Coach Bennett with his bench. Mike Lochnane has checked in for the first time for the Wildcats. Jordan Ross leaves his feet. Maybe got away with contact there and rebound out of bounds. Britsy looking for a whistle. Ricardo Cadini will check in for his first minutes for Matt McKillop. Kevin Gadge has the warm up. Whistle and a timeout taken by. Coach McKillop, there have been a few instances, Dave, where you feel like, and, and a big reason you schedule these games this early, you got to find out where you are heading into conference play. And that's, you know, I mean, of course you want to pick up wins in the preseason. Maybe two days. Yeah, this is obviously not their day, but they're well coached. They run great stuff. When they're playing well, they don't make a lot of mistakes. It can be a very tough out. Kevin Gadd into the ball game for Randy Bennett. Britsy is fouled by Ross. 2.46 remaining. We spoke about that team that made the great run in 2008 with Steph Curry, but I want to give a shout-out to those other guys on that team that were huge. Andrew Lovedale, Thomas Sander, Jason Richards. Taking Kansas down to the wire in that regional final. And that year, 
Kansas won the national title with Bill Self, finally breaking through as the best coach. They couldn't get to a Final Four. That you're winning it all with Mario Chalmers and company. A great title game that year. Mario Chalmers with the last second shot. Beating Memphis in overtime. Gail lead is 32, final two and a half minutes to go. Jordan Ross turning the corner, drops it off to Wessels. Nice pass by the freshman, and Wessels cashes in. Everybody making a contribution today. Three on the way, Jarvis Moss, a little short. Kevin Gadd flies in for the rebound. I love the focus of the subs, too. This is not garbage time. Nice pass. Wessels to Hawk for the jam. Rory Hawk soaring to the rim. And a two-hand stuff. I wasn't quite sure Rory Hawk had that in his bag. How about the Gale bench? Flapping their wings. Alex Dukas moving his arms as if he would, was using Hawk wings. It's a 34-point St. Mary's lead with 150 to go. Britsy off the dribble. Two gales, three gales there for the rebound. St. Mary's, they have controlled the boards. 23 assists tonight. This afternoon for the Gales. Kevin Gadd, a jump stop. Around and out. Hawk with the rebound. And he'll circle back out. Kevin Gadd still looking for his first collegiate points. The redshirt freshman out of Livermore. Ten to shoot. Ben another three. And the rebound picked up by Hawk. One of the stories of the game, the offensive boards. Maybe the story of the game tonight. This afternoon, Ross fouled driving the lane. And it's just the third Davidson team foul in the second half. As Spadone waits the scores table. 102 to go. Was it you that said this would be kind of a walk it up first team to 60 game? <laughs> Oh, that was me. It's my partner. Thirteen to shoot. Gad. Steal on the entry pass, but turning it back over is Schulte. It's a fresh shot clock for St. Mary's. Wessels back to the basket. Still twenty to shoot. Kate Bennett. Leaves his feet. Hawk extra pass. Ross from the right side. A little too strong. And the rebound gathered by Lochnane. Shot clock is off. Final 22 seconds here in Moraga. Spadone turns around. 15 on the game clock. Lochnane on Hawk. Lochnane with a right hand drive. A little floater on the way. Drops through with 9.4 to go. It's going to do nothing but change the final score. There will be better days for the Wildcats, but today, all about the Gales. They rise to their feet here in Moraga, and maybe a sigh of relief for Randy Bennett and company. As the Gales snap a three-game losing streak with an emphatic win over Davidson on this Friday afternoon, 